You're listening to Local Color Live on 88.7 WNCW. This Local Color Live session is made possible with our friends at Echo Mountain Recording Studio in historic downtown Asheville, North Carolina. Also, with the help of IMAVL.com, your independent arts and music destination on the web. This evening's guest, the broadcast. Welcome. Hey. How you doing? Great. What are you guys going to start us off with? We're going to start out with a tune called The Line. the music from the broadcast from Asheville, North Carolina these days. That voice that you hear coming out of the speakers belongs to Caitlin Crisco. Caitlin, can you tell me who everyone is in the band with you today? Sure. Uh, we've got Rich Brownstein on keys. We've got Aaron Austin on guitar. 
Michael W. Davis on drums, Matthew Davis on bass, and Tyler Householder on percussion. So talk about this Southern epiphany that the press has been referring to you guys as having. You're originally from Brooklyn, that's right? Yeah, yeah. Um, we moved down to Asheville in the fall of 2010. And uh, really, you know, we'd been playing in New York for a couple years before that, but it was once every four months and really not even everyone here, including the guys that came into the band once we moved down here, were in it. So the broadcast really came to exist once we relocated down to Asheville. That was when this became a full-time thing, a real band, a very much unified project with permanent members. It almost seems like it's got these swampy southern elements. Is, anybody, is anyone in the band actually from the south? Yeah, actually, we've got two boys from North Kakalecki. Uh, Tyler, our percussionist, and Aaron, our guitarist, are both from North Carolina. Nice. Yeah. So any listening to of Roots music that you did while growing up or? You know, to be really honest with you, our music, the biggest critique that we got when we came down here was, uh, you know, we love the band, but what kind of band is this? Who are they? They're so all over the map. And I think that that had something to do with the fact that we sort of had a revolving door of musicians. So our sound was constantly changing with the players that we were working with. And then when we moved down here and we had Matt Davis, bass extraordinaire over there uh joined the band he's michael's brother he actually had never met any of uh, had never met any of us before he drove out from california to north carolina i said michael except michael oh yeah except michael well he'd met you before yeah you're his brother <laughs> we're talking today i'm getting carried away with myself i'm sorry <laughs> it's okay. um, to make a long story short i think that when matt and aaron joined the band their musical influences really sort of steered us in a direction that we're going in now, that we are currently in. And also just playing shows, um, we started to realize that people were really resonating with this high energy rock and roll spirit. And, and then even traveling and touring, we realized that that sound wasn't really being made anywhere else. And there's, that's a really important sound in music. Um, and I think that rock and roll has always been a platform for communicating information to the community of listeners that embrace it. It's definitely a harkening back to the old days. I mean, I think it would be kind of difficult to uh, fit a seven-piece band into a, a small New York club, but it seems like you guys are doing that. Uh, <laughs> Thank yeah. you for your help. Sure. <laughs> She's got a falling <laughs> microphone over there. <laughs> Thank you, Caitlin. Um, yeah, so, you know, it's it's definitely been a change for us. I think it's it's been a dream come true, really. I think that when we moved down here, we took a leap of faith, hoping that this would be the answer to our dreams, really, in making music a full-time career and to be able to bring an authentic live music experience to people um, that sort of predates the digital era, you know what I mean? And um, and I, I feel incredibly blessed that Asheville and the Southeast in general has been such an incredible support system for us. It definitely seems like the South has really embraced you guys and yeah, definitely bravo to you. I wanna make mention of some shows you have coming up. Saturday, April 27th at the Double Door in Charlotte at 10 p.m. May 9th through the 12th at the Leaf Festival out in Black Mountain, North Carolina and Saturday, May 18th at Murphy's in Boone and then looking ahead to Thursday, May 23rd at Barley's in Knoxville, Tennessee. Yeah. Can we get to another tune? Yeah, totally, absolutely. Oh, yeah. Oh, by the way, I know this is going to air probably later, but for those of you that are on IMAVL right now, we will be performing at Asheville Music Hall this Saturday, April 13th. Um, and that's going to be an awesome show. We've got some crazy lights and some new music for you. So come on out. we got the Critters opening up for us. This song is the title track off of our record that's going to be released later this year. It's called Dodge the Arrow.
die. You've been listening to the music of the broadcast recorded at Echo Mountain Recording Studio in beautiful downtown Asheville, North Carolina. Videography provided by imavl.com for local color on WNCW. So for being such an upbeat and just grooving rock and roll band, you guys kind of tackle some dark themes there, talking about dodging arrows and getting torn apart and being haunted. And where does that come from? Um, well... <sighs> <laughs> <laughs> I think that music for me has always been a really cathartic experience and a very emotional experience. And I've been very lucky to be blessed with five men that have embraced all of my emotions and encouraged me toward expressing them in our music. And I don't think anyone in the group has ever, ever made me feel insecure or uncomfortable with the the lyrical content that I'm bringing to the group and I don't know if I've ever even said this to you guys but I just want to say thank you for that <laughs> thanks um, and I don't know I think that my whole life I've had a lot of anxiety and I think that I've had a lot of um, just overall worry like I can remember as a little kid just being really worried about all the things that could happen. And I remember my mom always saying, you could play the what if game forever. And so I guess I found my place for the what if game. And that was through songwriting. And all of the content is really personal and sometimes a little bit uncomfortable to express on stage. But I think as artists, we have a responsibility to be honest with our listeners and to be real with them about the experiences that we're having because you know, just because we get to have these opportunities where we get photo shoots or people videotaping us or even when you when you turn on the TV and you see these people and they have these glamorous lives, the reality is is that I don't know that anybody really truly has a glamorous life. I think that everybody struggles with a lot of internal turmoil and that it becomes our personal responsibility to work through those those struggles. And so music for me has been a therapy and a way for me to express those ideas. Well, it definitely seems like the perfect channel that you and your music have met each other's match in yeah. this life. It's pretty cool. <laughs> so you guys have, just to switch gears a little bit, a live album that you put out last year. Mm -hmm. um, and it sounds like plans for another recording. Talk about that process from going from just the totally, you know, bare in your soul live experiment sure. on, on record to actually going in the studio and honing some things. Well, I think as a band, we've always mentally been five steps ahead of where we've always been, actually. And that's always been an interesting driving force with each member of the broadcast. Um, we've always sort of envisioned ourselves beyond what we are, which has then brought us to those places that we've wanted to go. And so with the live record, it was really this this reality that in having Aaron and Matt join the band and with the new music that we wrote, we really needed to get a CD out last year. But we had no money, especially because I'm not sure if you're aware of this, being a rock and roll musician does not really make you a lot of money, um, at least at this point. But so we didn't have a lot of funds. And so we did um, a, a recording at Pisco. We did a residency and we had planned to release this live record. And, um, and then we actually randomly by happenstance did a show in Lexington, North Carolina at a venue called High Rock Outfitters. And the sound engineer recorded the show and it was just this really special show. And we listened back to the recordings and had this aha moment of like, oh my gosh, this has to be our live record. So we stopped like everything and just started the process over. And I think it was two weeks to our deadline. We, re we started the whole process over. And I think everyone around us probably wanted to kill us at that point. But it was the right move to do because the record was really meaningful to us and helped us in the last year enormously. Wonderful. So what about the new one? Um, we just recorded. No one else. Am I the only one talking here? Is that what this is what's happening now? No one else. Oh, all right. Maybe I'll put on a different voice. So it sounds like I'm a different band member. Um, <laughs> So we just recorded a full-length record here at Echo Mountain Studios. We had two weeks with a producer, Eric Serafin, from Los Angeles. Um, otherwise, his pseudonym was Mixer Man. And we had Julian Dreyer here at Echo Mountain as our sound engineer. He's the Mixer Man? Man? You mean the uh, salty <laughs> guy that used to make the anonymous posts on the yeah. internet about the bands? Okay, yeah. I'm familiar. So he produced our record. <laughs> 
And uh, it was an amazing experience. We really couldn't have asked for a more positive experience in the studio. There was virtually no arguing. It was really creative. It, there was so much laughter and enjoyment, and I think you can really hear that on the record. So we are finishing up the mixing. We're about to go to mastering, and um, the album is called Dodge the Arrow and it will be released in September. We're gonna do like a full-blown press campaign with our publicity agency for it. Well, congratulations, Caitlin. Thanks. Broadcast. Um, want to touch on those shows that you guys have coming up. You've got one coming up relatively soon, April 13th. Yeah. And that is... At Asheville Music Hall. At Asheville Music Hall. A couple for broadcast purposes, shows coming up Saturday, April 27th at the Double Door Inn in Charlotte, North Carolina. May 9th through the 12th at the Leaf Festival in Black Mountain, North Carolina. Saturday, May 18th at Murphy's in Boone. And Thursday, May 23rd at Barley's in Knoxville. What you got next? Uh, we're gonna do a new song actually, and it's oh so appropriately titled "Dial on the Radio." This is a song we wrote actually in this room. It happened here in this room right here um, on that piano. So here we go. Oh, can I get a first note? I'm sorry. <laughs> All right, here we go. What would it take to get you to stop? Running these stories through your mind make you crazy. Don't you think that it's a sign that it's getting late? For oh, the soul rodeo, yeah, you're reeling me in with your lasso. Don't you know that I'm getting so tired?
listening to music recorded by the broadcast live at Echo Mountain Recording Studio, courtesy of imavl.com. Can't stand that dial on your radio. I'm sure undoubtedly referring to one of those other radio stations. We're talking today with Caitlin Crisco. She's a front woman for this band and wanted to talk to you about life on the road. It seems like you guys kind of philosophize about getting out there, getting your music to the masses in a new and fresh way. Definitely. Um, you know, when we first started out with this venture, I don't think any of us ever had the intention of reaching out to a mainstream record label or anything like that. I think that we just looked at the people that we really admired from music history. And honestly, if you look back on it, the people that made their careers, whether it was in 1950 or 70 or 2000, the people that really made a long lasting life career, are people that were willing to sacrifice their lives to be on the road for the people that love their music. And we've been lucky enough to tour and to have a great reaction to the music and the shows that we put on. And with that reaction, we have a responsibility to continue bringing the music to people so that they can bring their friends the next time, so that when we come out with another record, they have the chance to buy it in hand. And, um, you know, I think, I believe, I really believe in the community of music. And yes, I do think that there is a complacency with today's youth culture, but I think it's also because today's youth culture has been inundated with so much content that it becomes really difficult to sift through it. It's almost like everybody's been thrown into Marshalls or some thrift shop and they're like, find a fabulous outfit, good luck. And, you know, it's not so easy to find content that you love anymore and so being on the road exposes people to that music in a way that they maybe otherwise wouldn't be able to hear it absolutely um so just to dig a little deeper has the band given any sort of is, is there a time constraint are you guys of the mindset of like this is a five-year plan if we haven't done x y and z in Gosh. five years then I, I mean, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, I think that at this point, everyone is really committed because we have a record coming out and we have a life together. I mean, you know, look, I, I'll be really real with you. And I think any band listening to this will be able to relate to it. There is nothing more difficult than sharing your life with people on the road. You're in such close proximity. Most people never experience that in their life. And we've worked through an enormous amount of interpersonal issues over the last two years. And I feel like we're all at a really good place with each other. And I think that we're learning to communicate on a deeper level with each other every day and, and to forgive each other for the times that we screw up or say things that we shouldn't have said. You know, everybody does that stuff. Now, did I read that you guys also moved into a house with uh -huh. a studio, all of you together? Um, well, sort of. I mean, all of us originally moved into the broadcast house, which is up in North Asheville. Um, and Aaron has his own place just like 15 minutes west of us. Should I, should I give like our addresses in case people Probably want to stop not. by? <laughs> Unless you want to. <laughs> um, so many things just went through my head just then. <laughs> and um, so, and then Matt, also our bassist, he lives he lives elsewhere, but we hang out at the broadcast house all the time. So it definitely seems like a cathartic environment to to put together spontane spontaneous you know musical ideas any any sort of thing in yeah, addition to the for sure you, I mean if you can if you can live with people and you can get through dirty dishes in the sink you can be in a rock and roll band with them <laughs> so so what about the singing when did that come to you um that's a very interesting question I would I grew up a, as a ballet dancer I was an apprentice at the Michigan Classic Ballet Company and as I grew older, quickly realized that perhaps I did not have the frame of a ballerina. So my mom was amazing enough to put me into some musical theater classes and some just, you know, performing arts classes. And I had a teacher, John Dyerline, who was my choir teacher in sixth grade and just picked me out of the litter and just said, you have a great voice, like really a great voice, and we should teach you how to use it. And I was very blessed to have amazing vocal coaches throughout my life that taught me how to sing without losing it. And uh, so far, so good. <laughs> Best of luck. I want to get to another tune, but first I want to mention one last time these shows that the broadcast have coming up Saturday, April 27th at the Double Door Inn in Charlotte, May 9th through the 12th at the Lake Eden Arts Festival in Black Mountain, Saturday, May 18th at Murphy's in Boone, and Thursday, May 23rd at Barley's in Knoxville. That's a pretty full calendar, you guys. Congratulations. Yeah, we actually booked it all ourselves, so that was a very, very cool experience to see that poster go up. 
What are you guys gonna do for us now? We're gonna close out with a song called Don't Waste It. And I would love to encourage, encourage audience participation right now. If you're driving in your car and you're listening to this, feel free to yell at the top of your lungs. Uh, and the chorus, there's just haze. You'll get it in like three seconds. And if you don't, shame on you because you're all artists over there. So come on. You'll get it the first time through. Oh, I should grab my tail. to live music from Asheville's The Broadcast, courtesy of IMAVL.com and Echo Mountain Recording Studio. Thank you guys so much for being here. Great to meet you. Thank Thanks you so much, you guys.